Lady Lazarus by Sylvia Plath. I have done it again. One year in every ten I manage it. A sort of walking miracle, my skin bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen. Peel off the napkin, O、oh、my enemy, do I terrify. The nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon the flesh, the grave cave eight will be at home on me, and I am a smiling woman. I am only thirty, and like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade! What a million filaments! The peanut crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot, the big strip tees. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees. I may be skin and bone, nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was ten. It was an accident. The second time, I meant to lass it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut as a seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you can say I have a call.、Cool. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's a theatrical comeback in broad day, to the same place, the same face, the same brute amused shout. A miracle that knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. So. So, air doctor. So, air enemy. I am your opus. I am your valuable, the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. Ash, ash, you poke and stir. Flesh, bone. There is nothing there. A cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. Air god, air Lucifer, beware. Beware! Out of the ash, I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air. Okay, so we are going to embark on another poem by、uh, Sylvia Plath, and this is Lady Lazarus. And、uh, in you know, in this screen, you can see her handwriting also pretty different. Maybe anyone who is a graphologist, maybe you all can study her signature and. Try and interpret the kind of person that she must have been. Without, of course, we all know about her background, so that's a different thing altogether. Okay. So, Lady Lazarus. This poem was published in 1965, two years after she committed suicide. It's a dramatic monologue, and it gives hints of multiple suicide attempts by the speaker. Following her death by suicide in 1963, Lady uh, uh, Lazarus was published by Sylvia、uh, in the 1966 posthumous collection Ariel. This is a book, a poetry book, Ariel, a collection of poems, and many of Platt's well-known, recognized works appear in Ariel. In there's a the the works the main. Uh, name of this collection is Ariel, and there's a poem also called Ariel. So, Daddy, Tulips, Ariel, all these come under this particular collection. The latter of which shares the same name, like I told you, with the collection. So, Ariel is considered a heart turn. It's very different, you know.、Uh, this、uh, collection of poems, the second collection of poems, because it dives into much darker and intimate themes of mental illness and suicide. Compared to Colossus, which I did with you earlier, this is more dark and intimate themes. So the collection also covers some similar themes as、um, uh, that semi-autobiographical novel, novel, The Bell Jar, which was published in 1963. So uh, uh, let, what about the themes? The themes here are death, depression, pain, and power. So though the poem talks about 
Platt's suicide attempts, there's a strong theme of resurrection. Uh, Lady Lazarus is a biblical allusion to Lazarus. So why are we having this title? Why did she give this title Lady Lazarus? Lady Lazarus, because there is a biblical allusion to this to this term, to this word Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus was the man whom Jesus resurrected from the dead. And uh, the addition of the word lady, you know, why did she, uh, you know, add lady to the word Lazarus? Uh, it could be uh, to indicate a feminine presence uh, because Plath was a feminist. She was uh, very active in the feminist uh, movement of those times. And or it could also hint towards a meaning such as, you know, resurrection of the female in a position more powerful than the male. And Plath here calls herself the female version of Lazarus. So she is considering herself as a woman who has the gift of being reborn. Okay. Here's a, a painting which I just put up here. If you'll observe on the left side, that is Lazarus. He was uh, he was actually buried, I believe, you know, and he was covered with this cloth. If you can see that he has been covered, that white cloth that is on him. And you can see Jesus on the upper right hand corner. He's coming down to, you know, bring him to life. This is what this is what I'm interpreting. I do not know if anybody has got a better interpretation. Do let me know about it. So uh, yeah, what I want you to notice is observe is this. Um, Lazarus, he is wearing that white cloth which is on him. So, you know, during those days, you know, when you die, the body is wrapped in a white linen. So that we will come to that. You will come across this particular thing when we are doing late the poem, Lady Lazarus. Moving on, let's go to a quick summary of the poem. Uh, the, the disheartened speaker talks about her failed suicide attempts. She gives reason for her resentment. She is expressing her anger for those who saved her from dying. And in spite of trying to die, she still survived. And uh, she states here that she is being used as an object of entertainment, which she does not like. And she regrets that her actions are watched as an act of amusement, you know, like a circus Thing, you know, you watch all animals in action. So she feels that her actions are being, she's being watched as an act of amusement rather than empathy. You know, people are not empathizing with her. Moreover, the people with their fake sympathies are contributing more to her page. She feels even worse when they're doing this and they're not allowing her to be free. So this is the quick summary of the poem. Uh, more about this poem, 24 stanzas, three lines each. When a stanza is having three lines, it's called a tercet. A uh, tercet is uh, shorter than a complete sentence in this particular poem because a, a sentence in this poem is going through at least a couple of stanzas. And the reason why uh, the, sen the uh, she's made it into a tercet probably could be that she wanted to highlight certain words for impact. She wanted, you know, everybody to literally absorb each and every word that she is speaking. So, uh, and there is an occurrence of enjambment to highlight certain words. And this is a dramatic monologue where she is addressing the audience in the form of a reader. And there are a lot of images of the violent, um, uh, what you call it, Holocaust, the uh, where the Jews were repressed, you know, the, the suppression of the Jews and their repression and how they were treated, all those things come over here. So you find that in this poem. Moving on. Can you see the screen where I'm presenting her poem? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. So... Okay, so uh, I have done it again, Lady Lazarus by Sylvia Plath. I have done it again, one year in every 10, I manage it. So here she says, I have done it again. What is this it we do not know? She just says it, I've done it again. And how often has she done it? Once every 10 years, one year in every 10. I manage it. Have I succeeded? No, but I manage it. 
a sort of walking miracle my skin bright as a nazi lampshade my right foot a paperweight my face a featureless fine jewel in see if you look at this poem these stanzas the one line is running over the first second and third stanzas so that means we have to read each and every word it's each and every word is having some importance okay and here she's talking about i am a walking miracle that means she's come back to life being resurrected you know she's being uh, she she tried to kill herself but that is what we're saying now she tried to kill herself and she is again come back to life my skin is bright as a nazi lampshade so here why is she using this nazi and all these uh, imagery why is she using this the reason being that she is comparing herself to a jew the jew was suffering under the nazis and similarly she is uh, you know uh, comparing herself that she is also like a jew who is suffering over here and there are these uh, people who are trying to bring her back to life they are the nazis they are the ones who are making life miserable for her so my uh, uh, my skin bright as a nazi lampshade now nazi lampshade is if you see the picture over here this is a lampshade made of human skin that is the jews when they were killed their skin was taken and made into a nazi lampshade this photograph is a real photograph by the way it's not a picture it's a real one and uh, there is also cases of you know uh, body parts of the jews were used as paperweight and um, uh, i don't have a picture of that it could have been too gory to put it over here so those pictures are not available my face a featureless fine jew linen now what's a jew linen jew linen is a biblical reference it refers to the cloth which is used to wrap lazarus in his tomb and here the next lines you come to stanza you comes to peel off the napkin oh my enemy do i terrify so peel off the napkin which napkin the white jew linen okay the fine jew linen that white linen peel it off and oh my enemy she's addressing an enemy she's addressing the readers as her enemy so there are some enemies who are reading this you know what she's saying uh, uh, peel off the napkin oh my enemy do i terrify that is do i uh, you know uh, scare you and what is it what is it that is there when you peel off the napkin the nose the eye pits the full set of teeth the sour breath will vanish in a day so she is just saying don't worry the sour breath you know when the body is uh, wasting and decomposing it will have a weird smell and this breath will vanish in a day so here there's a lot of there's a rhetorical question she's asking uh, she's using and she uses grotesque imagery you know to uh, express her self moving on soon soon the flesh the grave cave eight will be at home on me and i a smiling woman i'm only 30 and like the cat i have nine times to die so here she says soon the flesh that means when she is dead the flesh will you know decompose it will the grave cave eight it will it's like a personification a grave cave eight and it will be at home on me that means it will mix with the earth it will be one with the earth and i'll be nothing but the earth and i a smiling woman now this phrase is very ironic because uh, it conveys that the speaker is putting on airs and pretending to be happy and a regular woman when actually in the poem it is not so you know it doesn't uh, it doesn't seem so from the poem that she is happy and all that but here she says and i a smiling woman i am only 30 and like the cat i have nine times to die so here is a point where she is talking about um, you know uh, about death i have nine times to die so that means she's tried it once earlier when you look into the uh, previous one i have done it again once one year in every 10 and here we are coming to this point like the cat i have nine times to die so that means she is going to try she is going to keep trying if at first i don't succeed try try again so this is her mantra this is number 3 what a trash to annihilate each decade 
so she this is number 3 means this is the third time i'm trying to take my life what a trash to annihilate each decade that means you know what uh, uh, it's really horrible you know to try and um, destroy a decade that is 10 years i'm taking one year every 10 years i'm using one year to annihilate to kill myself and i'm wasting those 10 years of gone instead because after those 10 years then the next time i'm trying this is what she is trying to say so here we know it's a third attempt and she makes it look as if it's very exciting you know uh, what a million filaments the peanut crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot the big striptease so here she says uh, she is very critical of this public she feels that they are very insensitive and here million filaments means like you know a lot of lights excessive lights like you see in a circus like atmosphere and here you have a lot of crowds you know these people you know like people going to watch a movie they carry popcorn with them during those days instead of popcorn it used to be peanuts they used to be given handed over a uh, peanuts in small packets where they could munch and watch some entertainment so here she says the peanut crunching crowd shouts in to see them unwrap me hand and foot so you know she has tried to commit uh, suicide and there are these people who are just ogling you know voyeurs you know they are coming and they just watching her uh, uh, you know uh, the her situation you know like she must be lying flat on the ground or whatever it is they are just watching her and for them it is an exciting occasion you know uh, of watching all these scenes so uh, she is so she is very sarcastically she is using this word invites the public sarcastically to view her she says shoves in to see them unwrap me hands and foot the big striptease and then she says gentlemen ladies these are my hands my knees i may be skin and bone nevertheless i am the same identical woman so here she says you know she is inviting the crowd sarcastically that's obviously she is doing that she says you know these people will just come and they are just trying to um, you know just ogle at me and pass on comments you know trying to see it's something new you know something that they have not seen before like gaping to see what it is without offering any empathy or sympathy for her that she's just an object and an object of entertainment nevertheless i am the same identical woman the first time it happened i was tense so here she is talking about what happened the previous time first time it was hap- uh, it happened it was an accident so it was a drowning incident the second time i meant to last it out and not come back at all i rocked shut as a she seashell they had to call and call and pick the worms of me like sticky pearls so here what happened the second time you know she had consumed sleeping pills now i think here in on the screen i have put a picture uh, it's a newspaper incident this is a real thing which i have just uh, found out from somewhere it gives you the details of they they have they found you know there this is article about her she consumed a lot of sleeping tablets and uh, she was totally unconscious and she was almost on you know not going to come back you know and somehow they managed to recover her and she was found crouching behind in the attic outside and she was like in a fetal position that's why i rock shut as a sea shell i they had to call and call you know they had to try and wake her up and pick the worms of me like sticky pearls now here worms are indicating that it was some time before she was found and what why do they mention the word sticky pearls worms of me the worms are now being compared to sticky pearls why sticky pearls because the rescuers found more value in saving her than she herself did she didn't value herself so much but the people who rescued her found her very valuable so they started picking the worms of her like sticky pearls i hope the, these uh, these lines are clear to you shall i continue because if can you all hear me yes please yes please yeah, yeah please do because i don't want to go off the grid okay 
now she says this these are her famous uh, lines which you have heard you know very often it's like a quote over here there are many people who have even tattooed it on their arms dying is an art like everything else i do it exceptionally well i do it so it feels like hell i do it so it feels real i guess you could say i have a call it's easy enough to do it in a cell it's easy enough to do it and stay put is a theatrical come back in modern day to the same place the same face the same brute amused shout a miracle that knocks me out now what is she saying here she says like everything else dying is an art form it's a skill and i'm very good at it i try to die so it feels terrible like i'm in hell i try to die in a way that feels as though i'm actually dying i guess you could say that dying is my calling you know because i'm very good at it you can say that i have become an expert at it and she says yeah i do it so it feels like hell so this description indicates that plat the seeing life and hell as equal in regards to the pain she is enduring so she is living a life of hell that's why she says i do it so it feels like hell is the theatrical theatrical means you know it's like Uh, you know you're doing a magic show and suddenly uh, somebody disappears and some somebody just suddenly comes off so it is like a theatrical thing it's something like an entertainment for the audience it's theatrical as she is resurrected the crowd is amused and in awe and it is a spectacle and you know when she comes when they hear that she's come back to life everybody says oh it's a miracle and that knocks me out she hates it she does not like it this makes her really really angry So now here it is. There's a charge. I'm going on to the next stanza. For the eyes of my for for the eyeing of my scars. There's a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There's a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. so through these stanzas you know she is placing herself as an object of a uh, doctor's interest or a piece of my hair or my clothes so so her doctor so her enemy i am your opus i am your valuable a uh, pure gold baby that melts to a shriek i turn and burn do not think i underestimate your great concern so here you know she is showing her bitterness and her anger towards people who are trying to bring her back to life because what she wants to do is she wants to take her own life and what is happening is there are people trying to bring her back to life and they feel great that they are bringing her back to life okay so her enemy i am your opus throughout these stanzas she is you know she is the object of the doctor's interest and she notes that while she is valuable to the doctor she feels that the value is seen in her as a subject of testing you know they're just testing her out you know because she underwent a lot of therapy so this her doctor her enemy all these things are actually she's basically referring to those people those therapists you know they failed to bring her back out of this depressive state you know despite all these therapies it did not work for her and she uses the word opus to indicate that she is the doctor's greatest work and the gold indicates her intense value and how about the doctor's ability to melt her down and to focus his tests at her expense creates this sarcastic line you know she indicates a disbelief that of the doctor's stated concern you know the doctor is actually not interested in uh in, in finding out what is really wrong with her he is just interested in you know uh treating her you know treating her as the like the golden goose you say the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek so that you know he becomes more popular saying that oh somebody he brought her back to life so this is what she feels she feels that he is not doing her any favor and her is gen, uh, german word for sir so the speaker here again you will find that um the speaker is using this german word to again refer to the uh, holocaust you know the nazi germany you know the way the germans they treated the jewish people and to equate the men whom she sees as oppressing her she is equating them as to a, to as nazis 
So the doctor is a Nazi to her, he's an enemy to her. Then comes the um, final one. Here she says, Ash, ash, you poke and stir, flesh, bone, there's nothing there. A cake of soap, a wedding ring, a coal filling. Her God, her Lucifer, beware, beware. Out of the ash I rise with my red hair and I eat men like air. So here what she's saying is that she's referring to the Holocaust, alluding to the life of the Jews in the concentration camp. And here the doctors are essentially testing her until she's completely beyond hope. And uh, when she says uh, she's having her body burned, all that is left of plath after her body is burnt is ash. This idea that she has been consumed by the fire uh, leads to the final two stanzas. So here it is her God, her Lucifer. You know, she's calling on Satan. She's calling on God. You know, she's like coming out with vengeance. She gives a warning. She tells them, this is the idea. When I return, I will. it will be with a vengeance. And the final stanza refers to the cycle of a phoenix which burns when it dies, but is reborn to fight against those who imprisoned her. So she threatens them. She says, you beware. When I die, when I come back, I'm going to eat you like air. This is what she says. And her red hair in, uh, you know, represents the anger that she has got in her, the, the pent up anger in her, the vengeance in her. So my dear friends, with that, we come to the end of lady lazarus i hope you understood uh, you could absorb something that i had been presenting lady lazarus i have done it again one year in every ten i manage it a sort of walking miracle my skin bright as a nazi lampshade my right foot a paperweight my face a featureless fine jew linen Peel off the napkin, O oh my enemy. Do I terrify? Yes, yes, Herr Professor, it is I. Can you deny the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth? The sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon the flesh the grave cave ate will be at home on me, and I a smiling woman. I am only thirty, and like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade. What a million filaments. The peanut-crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot. The big strip tease. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees. I may be skin and bone. I may be Japanese. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was ten. It was an accident. The second time I meant to last it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut as a seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's the theatrical comeback in broad day to the same place, the same face, the same brute, amused shout, a miracle that knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. So, so, Herr Doctor, so, Herr Enemy. I am your opus. I am your valuable. The pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. Ash, ash, you poke and stir flesh, bone. There is nothing there. A cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. Hear God, hear Lucifer. Beware, beware. Out of the ash I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air. <laughs>